At first, a long time ago, we thought that there was not much water in space, let alone huge oceans with water. But as the time passed and new discoveries were made, we were pleasantly surprised. Now huge oceans not only mean that colonization of space would be a lot easier since oceans are everywhere, it would also be a potential place for alien life form to evolve, which is pretty exciting. Now, water is probably one of the few good indicators of whether or not life could exist somewhere. That is, because water is very good at storing energy, and it exists as a liquid over a large temperature range, making it good for life. And besides that, it consists of two very common elements, making it appear everywhere, so organisms can easily obtain it. So then how many oceans are there in the solar system? The short answer is 9 or less, but it is important to know that unlike on Earth, these oceans are not on the surface, they are all subsurface oceans, and the objects on which these oceans are on are moons and not planets. Also, there are a lot of geologic clues that indicate that Venus and Mars had oceans in the past on the surface, but that is far back in the past. But the ocean we are pretty much sure exists right now is on Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter. The moon is spewing water constantly, and it is spewing it up to 200 kilometers in height. That is 20 times the height of Mount Everest. Now, despite the fact that Europa is far away from the sun, the ocean exists in liquid form because of the fact that through tidal forces, other moons and Jupiter are heating Europa, causing it to be geologically active. The ocean is covered by a 20 km ice crust and should be around 100 km deep, which is 9 times deeper than the deepest part of our ocean on Earth. It is one of the most promising worlds for alien life to exist. Of course, we are not thinking of anything too complex, but there is a high chance that something like a single-celled organism exists there. Other two moons of Jupiter, which likely have an ocean, are Callisto and Ganymede. They are two huge moons as big as the planet Mercury, and the flexibility of their surface indicates that there is something liquid going on under the surface, which is most likely a water ocean. Next is Enceladus, a moon of Saturn which is very tiny. It has a surface area similar to that of Chile. Now, this tiny moon is constantly spewing water into the air. It is losing around 200 kilograms a second, and due to its flexibility in water, it is kind of obvious that there is an ocean underneath the crust. And through inspecting the water that was spewed, we know it has a variety of molecules in it, which indicates a good chance of life existing there. Other Saturn's moon, Mimas, which is the smallest spherical object in the solar system, also likely has an ocean, but clearly it is not as good for life, because it is not as active as Enceladus' has ocean. Now, the next one is pretty crazy, and it is on Titan. Under the very interesting surface, which is very lively on its own, with lakes and rivers of methane and ethane, under all that, at approximately 50 kilometers under the surface, there is a good chance that there is something liquid, and the density indicates that it is most likely salty water. That is because Titan was shown to be very flexible. Now, we don't know how big this ocean really is. There is a chance that the ocean could extend from 50 kilometers below the surface all the way down to the core of the planet, which could make it by far the largest ocean in the solar system. Now, all of these objects, we are pretty much sure that they have an ocean. But for the next three objects, it is just a possibility. So the first one is Ceres, which is actually a dwarf planet between Mars and Jupiter. It has lots of interesting mysteries going on on its own. The reasoning behind why we think it may have an ocean somewhere underneath is because a quarter of the dwarf planet consists of water ice. The density can tell us that. But the thing is, some of that water may be liquid. Another object is Triton, which is the largest moon of Neptune, that is in many ways similar to Pluto. It has lots of geysers, which spew lots of dust, but none of it is water. It is possible that there may be some sort of liquid underneath all that surface deep down, because there is enough tidal heating to support liquid water. And the last one is Pluto. The surface is mostly nitrogenized, with some mountains 
consisting of water ice. But that is just the surface. The density tells us that there is a water layer underneath all that. We just don't know in which state that water is. So those are pretty much all the oceans in the solar system and as we can see there are a lot of exciting things awaiting us.